Visual clutter can happen to anyone, whether or not you're a minimalist, but the great news is, is that you can reduce or eliminate visual clutter very easily and quickly. It's really kind of nuts how quickly your spaces can go from clean and streamlined to visually junky in like seconds flat. And let's just face it, even though we get everything perfect, life sets in and we get lazy and things get left all over the place. And before you know it, you have a visually cluttered space. So whether you're looking to reduce visual clutter quickly, if you have company coming over, or if you're looking to do more of a deep declutter so that your spaces can stay clutter-free even longer, this video will walk you through tips to reduce visual clutter fast so that you can have a clean and streamlined space that is more calm and peaceful. Hey, I'm Jen, the Minimalist Mompreneur. I run Hello Brio, a community of conscious creatives who want to achieve more in their business with less time, energy, and effort. This month, I'm participating in a collab playlist with some of my favorite minimalist YouTubers. The playlist, Minimizing in May, is designed to help you get acquainted with minimalism and show you how it can help you in your life. We've all created videos filled with minimalism tips and inspiration to help you in your own minimalism journey. So in my personal life as a minimalist mompreneur, I find that my desk gets cluttered very quickly. I come into the day with the best of intentions, have my cup of tea and my water and maybe my iPad and my laptop and that's it. But before I know it, I <laughs> look back at my desk and it's a couple hours later, I haven't moved probably, and I have bags of snacks everywhere, tissues and trash and toys and I don't even know how things end up on the desk like that, but it just happens. So here are the six steps to clear visual clutter quickly. Number one, start small. I know it can be really exciting to think I'm going to clear my entire house and everything's going to be perfect in an hour. And if you can do that, great. That's awesome. Good for you. However, a lot of times when we go to declutter something or clean something in general or minimize something, we can get overly excited. And before we know it, hours have passed and now we have a bigger mess on our hands. So I recommend choosing one space to clear visual clutter at a time. The second step is to remove everything from the area that you're working on. And I mean everything. Just take everything off the surface of the, of the desk or whatever you're working on and move it to another location, whether it's the floor or another table or something else. The third step is to clean the area. This is just a, a step that you can choose with whether or not you wanna do, but let's be honest, if there's that much visual clutter, there's at least a good film of dust on the table, if not other things like food scraps, etc. So it's just good practice to clean after you've removed everything. The fourth step is probably the most difficult, and this is to decide what is absolutely essential for the space that you're working on. For example, in my desk, I have to have my laptop, obviously. If I didn't have my laptop, I couldn't do my work. I also need to have my iPad so that I can do my digital bullet journaling, and I probably also need some coasters so that I can drink my tea and my water without having to worry about damaging the desk. Everything else that I had on my desk, whether it's a pen holder or extra electronics or toys or books, those can all go away. They're not things that I need. And even though there are some art supplies that I may need from time to time, I can put them elsewhere so that they're not distracting me from my day-to-day -day work. If you're trying to decide if an item is essential or not, I say when in doubt, just move it to another place. You can always bring it back later, but keeping it around when you're not sure generally isn't gonna work out. When it comes to decor, if you're decluttering something that is more of a decoration piece than a functional space like a desk, just remember that in decoration, odd makes even. Basically what that means is that when you have a space that you're decorating, an odd number of items is going to be more visually appealing than an even number of items. Number five is to find a new home for everything. This is where the visual decluttering process gets a little bit sticky because then you have to try and organize and put away everything else in a non throwing things type of way. So you don't wanna just throw things in a junk drawer. We wanna make sure that we can have a good place for everything to go and that everything has its own place. And again, I'm gonna go into deep decluttering a little bit later in this video. The last step is to create some guidelines about the rules that you wanna have for visual clutter in your home. This can be for you or your family or whoever you wanna communicate this to. You're gonna to wanna to communicate these rules to people, communicate locations of things to people, and then also decide how often you wanna go through these six steps of visual decluttering. So really quick, deep decluttering can get very, very, very time intensive 
very quickly. More often than not, visual clutter has to do with a larger issue that you can't really see. So in order to do a deep declutter, the steps are actually the same, it just takes a little bit longer. There are some challenges to a deep declutter and that really just has to do with the time and effort that you're about to put into something. Because there's a lot more involved, you have to plan to have more time and space to complete the project. And also you'll find that when you do a deep declutter, the project can get expansively bigger and bigger as you go, just because of things that need to be put in specific places or put away or swapped or sold or donated, etc. So whether or not you choose to do a quick visual declutter or a deep declutter, this exercise is going to have a lot of benefits for minimalism and visual appeal. There are tons of benefits to a clutter-free space. For me, I find that clutter produces anxiety and stress that is just not needed. When I wanna sit down and write a piece or do some work, I wanna be able to focus on the task at hand so that I'm not distracted by things here and there. And just being able to look around and taking a deep breath and not seeing any visual clutter just gives me a lot of peace of mind. Another benefit is that it is easier to clean. Yes, when you're cleaning your house regularly, if you have to pick up 20 things on a table versus three things on a table, you're gonna spend a lot less time cleaning and it's just gonna feel so much easier. When you're on top of everything and you're really making an effort to reduce visual clutter all the time, you're gonna find that everything has its own place and that you're gonna be less likely to have an accumulation of clutter again. So that when you have a beautifully clean table, for example, no one's gonna come in and throw X, Y, or Z on it. So they're gonna feel a little bit more compelled to put their jacket in the closet or their toys in the bin, etc. I kind of mentioned this before, but I feel like the most important thing for reducing visual clutter is that you have time and energy to focus on the things that truly matter to you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit like on the video and you'll find in the description a more in-depth blog post as well as the link to sign up for my newsletter so that you can get notified of new videos every time they come out. Make sure to check out the other videos in the Minimizing in May playlist as well, and I will see you next week.